we're going to get into the real style of programming uh, graphics. You uh, very, very, very rarely will ever come in a situation where you're going to leave your workspace looking like this with individual cues. As I said in the first series, do not do that. Make it nice, make it clean. And the reason you want to do that is when you need to change the order of something, all of the cues in that group will be together and you can move the groups around very, very easily. Um, so I'm going to always suggest to use groups. So let's say you're doing a pre-show video group with your title and your information in it. You're going to go into uh, group, which is a shortcut command O, or zero, sorry, command zero. And we're going to label the group uh, pre-show image. Okay. Uh, we're going to put this in here, there. We're going to drag that fade curtain cue in there as well. And we're going to turn off, uh, oh, sorry, we're going to collect, uh, highlight the um, actual group itself and then change the mode to timeline. And the reason you want timeline is you want all cues to fire simultaneously. All right. So we're going to go in here. We're going to make sure that's at zero, which it is. We're going to do the fade curtain cue to 100%. And then we're going to put the pre-wait times on that automatically. So we're going to tell this queue to start automatically at zero time. And this queue is also going to start at zero time, but we're going to make that a eight second um, intro. So now when we fire pre-show, all we have to do is do that. Both of the images fire and that comes in just like that. Okay. However, because it's pre-show, you want to have something else to look at. So we can actually add in the logo. Do logo. Um, yep. Pop that in the workspace. We're going to pop that into that group. Just like that. We're going to make sure it's connected to the QLab TV. Um, we're going to make that a custom geometry. I don't want it that big. And uh, like we said before, uh, we're going to put a fade on that as well. We're going to drag that on top of the fade to tell it what to fade. And we're going to make that 100%. But this time we're going to hold that fade of this cue for uh, 8 seconds. And then it's going to come in over 8 seconds. So now if we fire everything, all the images will fire, but this, this fade cue is going to be delayed for eight seconds, which allows the backdrop to come in completely first. <laughs> okay, did not make my logo uh, zero opacity. You need to take your opacity of the original logo uh, graphic and lower it to zero. Otherwise, the fade cue does nothing. I'm surprised it doesn't come up with an X saying, hey, we have the same thing here, but it doesn't do that. So we're going to go here and fire go. And now our curtain cue is fading in nicely. And as you can see, the logo has already been fired, but we're waiting till right now to bring that um, graphic in nice and slowly. And in many cases, I will do it really, really, really slow. So it just kind of happens over time, which looks great. Um, now you might have noticed that uh, due to the way the photograph is, it's not actually centered. Um, so I'm gonna have to kind of move, whoops, I'm gonna go in here rather and move that to the center. And I was always told never to put something in the center when I was doing graphic design in school. I was told to always kind of bring it up a little bit because the eye wants to see the object slightly above it, uh, what your eye thinks it's centered. It depends on the object you're using, but in 90% of the time, I always bring it up a couple pixels or a couple inches uh, to give it a nice look. And it does look much nicer. There's I'm sure there's more scientific reasons to why that looks nicer, but uh, I just know it looks nicer. I was told that years ago by a guy in Australia. Uh, anyway, so um, name was Dan. You, by the way, if he's watching this. Um, anyway, see, I remembered. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna now make that uh, a little bit different. This time, we're not going to um, have it fade in over eight seconds. We're gonna change the fade in time uh, to happen at the exact same time which is at, whoops, which is at zero. And this time we're going to have that come in at 20 seconds. Okay. So now all imagery will come in at the exact same time. Just the logo will fade in slower than the actual backdrop. 
So once again, all images are fine at the exact same time. You can already see the logo kind of there in a distant, and now it starts to fade in very nicely. Uh, while that's running, you can start programming the next queue by adding a group in here called fade out group. And we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to copy both of these queues, copy, and we're going to paste them and drag them into the fade out group. And all we're going to do is change out the fade out time. And the reason we saw that is because my live preview was on, as you saw in the previous video. Okay. So now we're going to, the logo is going to go out in only five seconds this time, and the background is going to go out in 10. So we're going to fire everything there, and you can see background and logo is fading in. Whenever I am ready, which I'm going to wait to that kind of opacity comes all the way up. <clears throat> I am going to go ahead and fade this out in about two seconds. One and two, we're going to fire both of those. And I think we made a mistake. Yes, we did. So because of the fact that I made it and made a new group, I did not connect uh, change the mode setting to timeline start all children simultaneously. Okay, I had to stop the video to remember how to do that. Um, so to to make a, a setting in your QLab workspace where most of your queues are almost always going to be group queues that fire all uh, items, children simultaneously, we can change that setting so we don't need to do that every single time we add a group queue in. Uh, to do that, it's been so long since I did it, I had to remember. You're going to go into the settings and you're going to go here to queue templates. Then you have all these options. In this case, if you highlight group, you can cha change that. It was on this right here. We're going to change it to timeline. Now, every new group that is made is going to be opened with that feature. Definitely do your, your group settings as a timeline always. And when you add a new group, you'll see that it automatically adds that with a timeline start all children simultaneously built in, saving that accident, which I just did uh, from happening. So we're going to go ahead and start this over one more time. We're going to fire the pre-show image. And now the pre-show graphics come in. And as soon as you're ready to fire those out, um, we can go ahead and fire those out at any time. You do not need to wait for the previous queue to finish. Uh, I want to point out to you before we do that, remember we're going to highlight stop target when done. So that when this fades out, both of those individual targets will stop playing, otherwise they'll play in the background. So we're going to highlight this queue, this group queue, and fade out group. And as you can see, my logo is going to fade out slightly faster than my backdrop. Or you can alternate it and have the backdrop go out first with the logo there alone, which does look really nice as well. Million possibilities here to do this. You've just now learned how to do group cues, fade in, fade out. And if you watch my audio series, you realize it's almost completely identical to fading audio in and out as well. So let's go to the next video if you're ready.